Welcome to the Cardiac Emma Learner Series, a unique video tutorial program under the aegis of Indian Association of Cardiac Imaging. This program is focused on beginners and intermediate images with learning happening through short sessions and case-based discussions. We are grateful to experts from different parts of India who have helped us in putting this program together. Please do feel free to give us your feedback so we can continually improve such training opportunities. This session is brought to you by Dr. Nile Nimbalka, who is the Founder Director of Precision Scan and Research Institute, Nagpur. He is a lead radiologist for CT and MRI in Seven Star Hospital, Nagpur. He has expertise in cross-sectional body imaging and is the lead radiologist for cardiothoracic imaging and angiography. He also loves pediatric cardiothoracic imaging and non-vascular guided interventions. He is been a guide for radio diagnosis diploma course at Precision Scan and is an executive committee member of the Indian Association of Cardiac Imaging. He has conducted multiple CMEs on cardiac imaging and workshops for both doctors and technicians. Today we will be talking about CMR anatomy and imaging planes. I am Dr. Nila Nimbarkar from Precision Scan and Research Center, Nagpur. Heart is like a complex structure which is similar to a two-room apartment with common wall in the form of interatrial septum and interventricular septum with four automatic doors operated by pressure gradients with vein as supply lines and arteries as delivery lines. In addition to that, it does not follow normal orthogonal planes of the body, which are axial, sagittal, coronal planes, and follows its own axis and contraction pattern. So to describe its anatomy and planes, we will also follow the same mixed pattern. First get to the orthogonal planes, followed by anatomy, and again followed by cardiac planes for cardiac myocardial anatomy. So what we will be doing, we will be imaging the thorax from apex of the thorax to the diaphragm and we may extend below up to the renals so that we will cover complete thorax as well as upper abdomen and it will give us idea about the visceral position as well as the heart position. Once we get these images, we will then go to coronal and sagittal planes to see where the axis is directing. If the axis is directing to the left, then it will be levocardia. If it is directing anteriorly and inferiorly, then it will be mesocardia. If it is directing to the right, it will be dextrocardia. Similarly, if the heart is predominantly positioned to the left of the thorax, it will be levo position of the heart. If it is predominantly in the center, it will be meso position of the heart. And if it is on the right side, that will be dextro position of the heart. So look in the scene A. The axis of heart is directing to the left, so that will be levocardia. And in scene B, it will be directing to the right, that will be dextrocardia. So once the axis and the positions are ascertained, we should try to identify the normal chambers and its peculiarity. So we start with atria. The right atrium has inflow track where the SVC and IVC are opening up and an atrial appendage which is a triangular irregular structure separated by crista terminalis or a terminal crest, which sometimes is prominent and can be confused with small thrombus or a lesion. Left atrium has left atrial appendage, which is a finger-like projection from the left superolateral aspect of the atrium and draining pulmonary veins. Now also try to measure how many pulmonary veins are draining into atrium and always look for any abnormally draining pulmonary vein into SVC or IVC. Plus look for the coronary veins which are draining into the right atrium and is in close proximity with the left atrial wall for any dehiscence. Always pay attention to the thinning out of interatrial septum which is at the fossa ovalis and is a normal finding. Now atrium and ventricle are guarded by very precisely operating atrioventricular walls a tricuspid wall on the right side and mitral wall on the left side. Whenever we are identifying a ventricle, we usually look at the wall thickness. Ventricle having maximum wall thickness is left ventricle and ventricle having thin wall is right ventricle. But that is not a consistent feature. 
so we must know the consistent features which can identify a right ventricle from left ventricle the intraventricular septum on the right side of the heart is having irregular surface as compared to that on the left ventricle second point the right ventricle has moderator band which is extending from the interventricular septum to the free wall of the right ventricle and right ventricle also has the outflow tract which is having bundle of muscle surrounding it that is infundibulum so for all practical purposes the ventricle having moderator band is the right ventricle another important point is that the ivc will always drain into right atrium and right atrium will drain into right ventricle so to identify a right ventricle if ivc is draining into right atrium then it is going to drain into right ventricle that circuit also we can identify the right as well as the left ventricle properly now during the ventricular contraction look at the interventricular septum in a normal physiological state the interventricular septum should always be convex toward the right ventricle giving a circle shape to the left ventricular cavity if at all there is some increased pressure on right ventricular side then the interventricular septum can be straight line or can move towards the left ventricle during systole as well as diastole as is seen in this example as we can see the increased pressure gradient on the right side of ventricle is causing increased thickness of the right ventricular chamber as well as there is movement of the interventricular septum to the left side of the ventricle during systole as it is looking straight line during the diastole now we should look at the right coronary artery which can be located in the right atrioventricular groove the lcx can be seen in the left atrioventricular groove and the lad can be seen in the anterior interventricular groove fine with the basic anatomy now so far so good so now get to these structures along the axis of the heart we require specific imaging planes along the cardiac axis like we see in the echo which are also having the same nomenclature as seen in the echo which is short axis or a sa view four chamber view three chamber view vertical long axis horizontal long axis lvot rvot and planes along the walls out of which the short axis four chamber and three chamber views are most important views for evaluation of the heart now what do we have right now we have axial coronal sagittal from the scanograms as well as the white and the black blood images present with us use those images take the axial view go to center of the mitral wall and draw a line which will go through the apex of the heart this view or the plane is going to give us a two chamber view or also called as vertical long axis view from this vertical long axis view if we pass and take the same lines which are passing through the center of mitral wall and towards the apex of the heart what we are going to get is horizontal long axis view in this horizontal long axis view which is also called as near four chamber view we are going to see the interventricular septum nicely as well as the lateral wall nicely apex is also clearly seen in this view now the next view is the short axis view take use of the near four chamber view draw a line or a plane perpendicular to the interventricular septum and take planes from either the base of the atria towards the apex or from the level of mitral wall towards the apex now these images can be taken from 5 mm to 10 mm in thickness but the clear idea is that there should not be any interslice gap because we want to calculate volumes and have assessment of all the function of left and right ventricle from the short axis view which is one of the most important views now from the short axis view draw a line perpendicular to the interventricular septum from the insertion of mid papillary muscle and that is going to give a actual four chamber view this four chamber view will give us clear idea about the interventricular septum how the walls are functioning whether it's mitral wall or a tricuspid wall and how is the apex and the lateral wall one practical point here a horizontal long axis view or a near four chamber view and a four chamber view can actually be used interchangeably 
whenever you don't have enough time to complete the study or the study has to be finished fast you can use either a horizontal long axis view as compared to that of a four chamber view now another important view a three chamber view go to the basal slices of the short axis view where you are going to see aorta coming out from the medial and superior aspect of the view now take that plane once you get that plane the axis passing through that plane is going to give us three chamber view which is going to give us idea about the interventricular septum apex left atrium left ventricle and the outflow tract nicely if you want to further evaluate the outflow tract and the ascending aorta take a plane which is going through this outflow tract and that is going to give us a left ventricular outflow tract in a vertical axis giving rise to the assessment of aortic wall nicely the sinuses nicely and the ascending aorta going to the right the assessment of rvot view that is the right ventricular outflow tract go again towards the basal slices of short axis you will see the pulmonary artery at the top of the ventricle take a line or a plane perpendicular to this path and it is going to give us a good rvot plane that will evaluate the walls nicely and if you still want to further evaluate it the wall as well as the function of rvot we can take a plane which will go through this rvot to evaluate functioning of the wall main pulmonary artery and its early branches in addition to the wall evaluation of mitral and the aortic wall or a tricuspid wall we can take thin slices along these walls and can see the functioning of these walls nicely whether they are coopting nicely and opening up very properly or not now we have all the planes with us the imaging is done we have to label the myocardial segments the myocardial anatomy which is important to identify the coronary territories hence for the diagnosis and evaluation of segmental anatomy how are we going to get this now we have vertical long axis and four chamber view with us look at this wall of the vertical long axis this is actually going through the anterior wall of the myocardium and this wall is passing through the inferior wall in rest of the planes so this wall is the anterior wall of the myocardium and this is the inferior wall of myocardium simultaneously on the four chamber view this wall is the septum and this is a lateral wall now we are dividing the cavity into three chambers the proximal one is the basal segment the mid one is the mid segment and this one is the apical segment and the following rest eight is actual apex of the heart the plane which is passing from center of the cavity is going to give us the mid chamber or the mid cavity of the heart proximal to that will be the base and distal to that will be the apical cavity most of the papillary muscles will be nicely seen in the mid cavity only the tendons will be seen in the basal segments and hardly any papillary muscle or their insertions will be seen in the apical segments now how we are going to divide it we go to the mid segment directly take the anterior insertion of right ventricle on the left ventricle and inferior insertion of the right and left ventricle draw lines from these insertion points to the center of the ventricular cavity now the third line which is passing from the insertion of the mid papillary muscle going perpendicular to the interventricular septum will divide our cavity into six segments the anterior one the anteroseptal one the inferoseptal one inferior inferolateral anterolateral and again the anterior one now if we go towards the basal segments the same anatomical division will be repeated the basal segments will also be divided into similar six segments once we go to the apex we will need only two lines from the insertion points of lv rv we will draw these lines towards the center of the ventricle and it will divide it into four segments anterior septal inferior and the lateral ones i hope we all should be clear about which segment we are looking in which view if you still have any confusion we can just have an example in a three chamber view look at the axis from where it is going in a short axis view this area of the axis is passing through the septum which is anteroseptal and this area is passing through the lateral wall which is inferolateral so once we are evaluating a three chamber view 
the septum which is seen is predominantly the anteroseptal part and the lateral wall which is seen is predominantly the inferolateral part of the lateral myocardium. So now we are finished with all the segments of our heart. Six segments at the base, six segments at the mid cavity and four segments in the apex and a true apical segment forming complete 17 segment heart. What are the learning points we are getting? Identification of the cardiac axis is very important. Identify normal structures and chambers. IVC consistently drains into right atrium and if right atrium is draining into right ventricle then that connection is proper. Identify right and left ventrial appendages. Right ventricle versus left ventricle identification. Get your planes right. Four important planes. Short axis, 4 chamber, vertical long axis and 3 chamber. If you are getting it right, your anatomical evaluation and the functional evaluation will be best. Identify the myocardial segments and try to name all the segments in your report in different imaging planes to reach a diagnosis. Thank you very much.